I've been running with Max, the bass player, since Christmas and sofas and working in bars since Molly. I gave Max, the bass player, my old bass guitar. It was dusty in my mother's spare room. My father had told me, you're in a story about working in bars, and this story begins in three parts. And I suppose it was about when I stopped playing guitar that I began playing taps. Taps like nipples, taps like dicks, beer like piss and cum and spit. I'd been running around Hackney with Max, chasing the shapes of dog's eyes. One. <coughs> the nights were my favourite. Long London nights wrapped up on the sofa. All sofas that lasted forever. I moved to Hackney a year ago. To endless nights of tired feet still humming and come down far from sight. Always a glass of water on the floor I kicked over. Always a rainy police car siren moaning, a love song sung to all the bartenders of London. And I am wrapped in Ace's spare duvet, in Theo's thick old throw with a map of London <coughs> sewn on it, and in a towel or an old grey bedsheet with Max on the Shacklewell Lane, house sitting in the gloam of street lamps that part the bars welded over the window from the days when that place was a motorcycle repair garage. Orange light always walking through in through whichever window I'd most recently slipped through. Nowhere to call my own except my body, and even that was being shared. The nights were my favourite. <coughs> That's two. Have you ever looked into a dog's eyes? The pupils are not round. I have astigmatism in my left eye, so I know. When I was 13, I stuck my hand down a terrier's throat to remove a chicken bone she'd been choking on. My mother once stuck her hand down my brother's throat. He had eaten the skin of a kiwi fruit and it had lodged itself in there good. He was a child at the time. His throat didn't like it. It's all coming back. The dog coughed up blood, but only a safe amount. Back to me, when I was a baby, or maybe two or three, I tried eating a wasp I found lounging in a garden memory. Well, this is what I imagine. There was an apple tree right in the middle. Ivy on the walls and the remains of a Thomas the Tank Engine bicycle that didn't belong to me. The wasp only managed to sting my lip. As you can see, my family has a strange oral tradition. It involves shouting. I stuck my hand down the throat of a little white and brown coated terrier to remove a chicken bone I had given her two minutes earlier. Dogs don't pace their consumption or care what danger they're chewing and I wanted to test the rumour that bird bones would shatter. The chicken had been marinated in barbecue sauce, so who can really blame her? All the flesh was gone, and she was happy when I freed her. Wagged her tail, but I was too ashamed to tell her, hey, it's all my fault. Of course she knew. I could tell by the look in her left eye. It had a corner. But that didn't stop her turning the other paw. Dogs will do it all for the love of their owner. <coughs> That's three. <coughs> The queen kept leering at me, mocking, cashing tills, smashing bells, smells of brewers east, of bugs, their feces and families and drugs. The queen kept changing faces when I opened the drawers for change, horizontal folds around her cheek, and she looked like a deranged outpatient waiting for a bus. On a tenor, green fiver, green wrinkles crunched enviously out of some regular's drunken pocket. Half a barley wine, a bit early for barley wine, isn't it? It's still warm outside. The queen grow, glows red like Beelzebub on a 50 pound note, conjuring, shining the skin less wet. Got to check each 50 we get. Some pretty good fakes keep turning up. But this time she wasn't mine. She was yawning. 7.4%. <clears throat> I'm a tap puller. No student, artist or writer. No cause but to put bowls before paws and pint glasses on banknote coasters. That's why Bowes hired me, because I was good. And I think Dee had a lot to do with it. Bowes was telling me about when he used to work at one of the other company, the company's other premises, the Crown on Chapel Road. I got off a bus earlier and nearly fell over. My right leg was dead. It had been crossed for 50 minutes straight, 276 from Bow to Stoke Newington. First thing, 8 a.m., warm ventilators that spoke to me, made me calm for all the sleep I missed on the sofa having spent the night with Molly, who had a real bed for 6 50 a month. I said I couldn't see the appeal, but then perhaps she was more real than me. I wanted to cook for her, but I didn't have a kitchen either. 
I only had an unfoldable sofa, but the frame was bent and the mattress was stained and old. Bose was telling me about when he first worked for the company years ago, when he was lower down on the, on the employee scale. <coughs> I was setting up the bar. It was a 15-minute affair. If you move fast, get the glass washer on to warm up and the benches set down outside. Pavement swept, and that left 45 minutes to convalesce before disengaging the anti-human bolt on the door. I had my own set of keys then, and that meant they wanted me forever. Bo said, we had five ashtrays at the end of last week. I said, we still have four. He was flexing his Turkish muscles, and I was flexing my bottle opener. Didn't you get any sleep, he said. I shook my head. We went to Lisa's the night before and had a lock-in. When I worked at the Crown, said Bose, there was this guy wandering around the pub, looking like he had lost someone. You know how it's set out over there. Not much bigger than our place, but with more corners. And I said, you're right there, mate. And he, he just said, well, I'm just looking for my friend. And he had those shifty eyes. I was smiling like an idiot. <clears throat> So I said, you haven't got any friends here, mate. And you know how a guy know, how you know if a guy's definitely up to something? He acts all nice and charming. And then he fucks off without a warning, not even asking why. I said, you better leave. All nice and caring. And he just said, okay. And he left with his coat hanging over his arm. Remember that part. Pointing at me. But the manager, as I was looking over the opening checklist, ticking off all the boxes, filling washer and sink unit with slice of lime or lemon catcher, which is actually an old tub of mayonnaise some phantom bartender stuck a few holes in with a screwdriver. The manager, said Bose, because I wasn't boss here yet, was downstairs with a woman whose bag had just been stolen. And they were checking the CCTV, and they're looking and they're seeing this guy, the same guy who was talking to me, walking past her, not even lingering, coat over arm and slipping her handbag off the back of her chair where it had been hanging and sticking it under his coat. Mm-hmm. And they're watching me walk up to the guy and, like a total idiot, asking him to leave. Oh, shit. But that's nothing, said Bose, as he inspected some guacamole the chef was making, because the next day I'm walking along the street from Cliss Old Park to start my shift, and this was when I was training to be manager, right? And I see this guy, the same guy, and I run into the pub and I shout for the boss, and the boss comes out with me, and we run at this guy, and I get him pinned up right against the shutters of a shop. It was Boxing Day. <clears throat> I laughed. Stole her bag on Christmas? That's right. And I said to him, if you move, I'm going to punch your face in. And Thomas, the boss, he checked his bag, and you know what he found? What? A fucking ashtray. <clears throat> My left testicle was hurting again. Usual cancer stress. I'd seen the doctor three times in three months. I'd seen the doctor six times in one year. The doctor, a doctor, every doctor the NHS had to offer. I'd been scanned and lubed and fingered and prescribed drugs that turned my lips blue. But nothing could mend. Call it bad posture. Standing up all day at the bar. No private health care offered there. No London living wage. Molly had asked me if it was gonorrhea on a London telephone Thursday. Only I've been speaking to my sister, she said. And mate, I'll probably want to have children someday, you know? And we use condoms anyway, so it was fine. I was obsess obsessed with the shapes of dogs' eyes. My mother's chicken bone terrier was going blind. She wrote a book about it, in an attempt to vent her canine frustration. The shapes of dogs' eyes, terrified of humiliation, of incontinence. Which was becoming a problem. I am terrified of castration, and also ambition. It makes being a bartender so much more difficult. Molly was living with her sister, and she didn't like me. I don't know why she didn't like me. Molly said, you probably didn't make enough effort the first time you met. We'd been walking along Roman Road, and Molly had paused to look at a dress hanging by a market stall. <clears throat> I needed socks, and her sister wanted to know if she could take a dog into her office. Her office had no windows, and she had this theory that men can't shit as easily as women. Lack of natural pushing, or something. She wanted to whip it. 
The terrier's eyes had a milky white incandescence that leant towards bottle green, as though she was a wine, bot wine bottle washed up on a tropical shore by a sea of frosted glass made dull by having her ovaries and uterus removed before she could have babies and see them produce. Now her eyes are tempered by heat pressure, held together with a thin coating of plastic film, so when they decide to shatter, they won't. They'll just crumble instead like pencil lead whenever they hit the floor. A crack on the inside made even more edges, while the outside was only more blurred. I wanted the meaning of the shapes of dog's eyes, so I could have it, so I could validate it and be sure that I knew it, and could thus relay it to others. I wanted to write it down, not just make it up, keep it created in some kind of personal truth my brain itself stated when I first came to Hackney, and first witnessed the situation, the dogs, they were running it. And only I seem to be aware of this. Thank you very much.